Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to our webinar. My name is uh, Branislav Bezak. I'm a vice president in custom solutions in Toradex. I'm located in our uh, Toronto office. And uh, here is the here are the items that we want to cover on, on this uh, webinar. First, I will do a little bit of introduction of Toradex, and then we will go through hypothetical project uh, that uh, you need to do. Uh, we will cover all the steps you need to, to complete the project. We will look at um, um, your criteria for selection of the best supplier. Uh, we will look at uh, how much approximately it might cost and what the unit cost uh, might be at the end and uh, how much time you need to get this project done. We we'll talk about the, the risks and then there, at the end there is a question and answer uh, section. Please feel free to enter your questions anytime in, in the chat window and we will look at them uh, at the end. Okay, so a little bit about the Toradex, uh, what we do. We do um, embedded uh, computing, uh, we focus on, uh, on system on modules. Um, we have uh, offices in uh, multiple locations in, in the world. Um, company is more in operation than 20 years. Um, uh, we have uh, lots of partners that might actually help you um, perform some of these tasks, design tasks. Um, and we shipped more than 4 million modules. Um, um, we are known for the hardware. Um, we have four families of uh, system on modules. Um, the oldest one is Colibri down there on the, on the bottom. Uh, that one is practically from the beginning of the Toradex uh, and it's still running and we have still some new designs with this family. The, uh, the Verdin family is uh, started around uh, year 2000, 20, 2020. Um, it is what we would probably recommend to consider for the new designs. And we also have a Palis family that has a little bit uh, higher performance, higher cost modules. And the last family, Aquila, it's brand new, just introduced this year. It is for very high performance systems. I will talk a little bit about uh, which family might be the best for your project uh, a little later. Um, we operate in uh, multiple different industries and, and applications. Uh, here, these five are kind of our strategic focus. And I can promise you that if you work with Toradex, if you select Toradex, you will be as happy as that lady on the, on the left picture there. She must be in some very fancy hospital. What we also do is uh, Torizon. That's our operating system for embedded systems. And we recommend to look at this as it might be really the best option for, for many projects. It helps you uh, put uh, the system quicker to together, so save you development costs. And it also includes many features that uh, most of the embedded systems uh, will need. It will help you deploy the updates uh, in a secured way. It can help you monitor your fleet, uh, get the information about, uh, about the fleet uh, and, and so on. We have many information uh, and there are many other webinars available um about the horizon feel free to 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 look for them or contact us and we will guide you uh, to to more information about um, uh, horizon okay so this is about you so if, let's imagine you are a product manager in a new startup it's a new, new job and um, you know the company where you started working is called paranormal communications and your first task is to develop and bring to production an industrial gateway. And we have two scenarios prepared. One is um, a scenario that more, maybe more closely resembles um, project schedules in Europe. So the technical requirement for your, for your product is you will need some sort of processor that is capable of running Linux. Um, you need two Ethernet ports, two USB ports, uh, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. You need cellular connectivity to push the data to the cloud. 
there are some industrial protocols. Uh, you might need some uh, simple enclosure so that you can mount the device in the, in the, on the DIN rail in the electrical rack. And of course, uh, you need to support AI because every new product needs AI. Even if you are developing a toothbrush, it will need to be a toothbrush with an AI. Your development budget is 100,000 euros, and you were told it cannot cost more than 250 euros per unit in a quantity of 1,000 per year. And you were told if you are able to make this in 18 months, you will get your seventh vacation week. So, yeah, so that you are really motivated to make this happen. For our uh, customers in, in North America, the requirements are similar, um, but you need even more AI. And uh, your development budget and unit cost is in US dollars, but you only have nine months to do this, uh, to do this project. And if you are not done, you might get fired. Okay, so what steps do you actually need to do to, um, to be done? So first, you will need to prepare a specification. You will need this because if you need to go to a design house or to us or even to your own team, you need to tell them what that product needs to do. Then the, the, the second step is you will have some architectural questions to decide um, how, how, how the device will be laid out, how it will work, and we will you know, talk about those later. Then once you really have that, you need to select the supplier and then actually the, the next step is detailed engineering. You will need to start probably with, uh, with electronics design of the carrier board. You will need to do a schematics and then PCB design. Uh, at the same time, you might start uh, working on the enclosure. Uh, usually this, is, this might be a little bit delayed. It is practical pro probably to start it once you have at least the beginning of the PCB design because that will be the first thing that the mechanical designer will ask you, please give me 3D step files of, 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 your, of your carrier board. Um, once you have these design steps done, you will need to manufacture the first uh, series of prototypes. Um, and potentially, depending on, on, on your product, you might need some low-level Linux software modifications in BSP, in board support package, or you might need a driver. And these are to make all your hardware work on a low level. So the Linux system can, can see them and it can you know, access the, all the circuitry. Then you will need to test these prototypes. Um, very likely you will find you know, some issues or at least there will be an opportunity for improvement. Um, and you might need to do another one or more design rounds where you would practically go back, hopefully to the step three and uh, you know, make some modifications and, and so on goes through those steps three to seven again. Uh, also, at some point when you have uh, your lo low level um, software done and uh, you know, it is kind of working on a hardware level, you will need to work on your application software. And when you are done with that application software, or at least you are close enough, um, you might need to go through certifications. And um, once you are done with certifications, it's time to think about the manufacturing setup. Uh, you will need to work with someone to make your first production run. And uh, then you need to actually get it manufactured. And you are almost done at that time. You, you, have, you have your devices, you have you know, first batch of uh, devices. And after that, you should think about your plan for procurement and obsolescent management. Okay, so so who can do all these steps? Practically, for every step, you have you have uh, four four choices. So, um, if you have um, if you are part of a larger organization or or you have a team that can do any of these steps, it might be the best choice to route just to use your resources. Right? It has like everything advantages, disadvantages. One of the advantages is 
you keep the knowledge inside the house you will have someone to help you troubleshoot you can use it for the next uh, you know for the for your, the, this experience for the next project and then so on uh, often though uh, you might not have experienced team or or you might have experienced team but they are busy working on something else um, so you need to look at someone uh, outside um, we believe that we hope to be one of the best option for you uh, so you can talk to to us we have a you know i'm i'm uh, leading the toradex solutions uh, division here in canada please talk to us um, if uh, for whatever reason you have a preference to work with someone else toradex has a large number of partners for hardware for low level software for drivers for applications uh, for some particular type of software development. So there is uh, there is a large uh, network of partners around the world. You might be able to find someone local if your team prefers to work with a local company, for example. Also, um, if you don't find the right uh, Toradex partner, you might work with some generic engineering or, or consulting uh, company and um, uh, this might um, be the best case let's say if you have a very complicated medical device um, and you need to go through some heavy uh, medical certifications it might be the best to actually work with some consulting company that is specializing in that particular type of development and passing through those uh, medical certifications Okay, so so here we have all those 12, 12 steps um, and who can do them. So as I mentioned, um, maybe you have um, maybe you have uh, a team or, or resource internally to do any or some of these steps. We expect that at least specification, you will need to do most of it, right? You will need to write down what the device needs to do. Um, the rest of the items, you might have someone or not. Almost always uh, we've seen that application software is actually done by you, by your team for whatever reasons. Probably that's because very likely it is your know-how, it's, it's what you do, right? Now, if you, uh, if you would uh, consider working with us, we can do we can help with the specification we can definitely help with the architecture we can do all the design steps um, uh, typically we don't do application software internally if you wanted us to do that we would work with one of the toradex partners but we would manage that process we also typically don't do full certification we often uh, help customers we do let's say pre-scan we can do. Uh, we could also do the full certifications. Typically, we just don't do that because there's lots of administrative work, lots of logistics, and we like, sorry, we like to focus on actually on the engineering uh, items. And we can definitely do, and we are very interested in, in doing manufacturing. That's actually our core in my division, what we do, uh, manufacturing. Um, Toradex partners, uh, for some of these activities and some of these items, you can find Toradex partners. However, we don't have many partners that could do everything. So it's likely that you might end up in a situation where you have one partner doing the design steps in orange color, highlighted in orange. You might have a different partner who specializes in BSP and driver, and you might have a different partner who specializes in application development. And kind of the similar situation with uh, generic consultants. Uh, not often you will find a company that would um, do everything. And it is okay to basically combine various partners. However, um, if you want to have really easy life and no stress, it's best if the hardware is done by the same company or same team than the low level software and why is that because once you have a prototype and you find out something doesn't work it is 
often very challenging to find out where the problem is. Is it the hardware or is it the software or is it the low level software? And, and if you hired two different companies or two different teams, well, none of them will be really super keen to spend time of their engineer to spend three weeks trying to set it up and find out why one of those uh, 10 million messages on the Ethernet 2 doesn't go through, right? Because very likely they find out which side it is, it might not be them and they will likely not get paid for that, right? And you might being end up in the middle between these two companies trying to push this side and that side to really find out where the problem is. Similar situations situation could also happen uh, between the design uh, company and your contract manufacturer. If they are different company, um, it is really not ideal because again, you are in the middle between these two. And if the manufacturing company will, can tell you, we cannot manufacture this. These connectors don't, don't go in well, right? They don't solder properly. We'll have very high failure rate, right? and they will try to push back on on you and then you will need to go back to the design house and tell them well i have these concerns what do i do about it and they might just you know again they might not be too super keen to help uh, help you work on that so um if possible try to find someone who does multiple of these activities okay so this is the time for the first poll so the question is, what is the biggest challenge on your projects? So what do you typically struggle with? If you run a similar, similar project, um, which of these options you would say was the most uh, challenging, um, most challenging for you? So I will let you think about it for a little bit. Okay, so what are the results? So meeting the unit price was the highest at 29%. Meeting time to target also 29%, very interesting. I would guess the meeting the unit price would be the hardest one. Implementing all the hardware and software functionalities, next one is 19%, pass certification 14%, okay, other 10%. Okay, very interesting results, okay. Next one. So specification. So this is kind of the first step you will need to do. Um, and there is a number. I have three slides of technical requirements. Uh, this is the first slide. Um, I will not go through this in detail because we have a lot of cover. Feel free to come back to this slide uh, if, if you will be in a position to write the specification and um, uh, you know look at these uh, line items. It would be basically great to have a, a one line in your specification for each of these. So we have an environmental specifications, mechanical enclosure, performance, power requirements. Uh, then you should list what type of communication protocols do you need? What sort of industrial protocols, IO? Uh, if you have a display, what do you need to have in the display? Audio, debug and development. There are some supportive functions here. We have also support peripherals that almost every application might well, no, might need. So look at these. The new things are, I strongly recommend considering adding a TPM, a Trusted Platform Module. It's a chip that costs a few dollars and it's used to store passwords and it can help with an encryption. It's becoming more and more critical and we have lots of customers who are really focused on high security of their products asking for it. So so. I would uh, strongly recommend uh, adding it to your specification uh, if you can get benefit from it. And also another line item is um, connectors. It's always good to specify if you have preferred type of connectors. Okay. And then there are non-technical specifications. Um, probably the, the most interesting piece of information that anyone will want to know is you know what is your estimated production volume and what is your target unit price and the reason why we like to 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 see the target unit price is is that the architecture might be very different um depending you know how how, how 
big pressure you have on the, on your unit price because as as we've seen in the poll, the unit price is always one of the hardest uh, things to reach and accomplish. And if almost always what we've seen is that that the um, the specification that the customer would like to to meet and all the features they ask for, it's it's we, we don't have a way how to make it at their unit price. So there needs to there needs to be the work where we say well. Okay, if you if if it, this needs to be done for 250 euros or 250 US dollars, okay, let's just see. Can we do you need uh, both of these Ethernets to be gigabit? Can we go from USB 3 to USB 2? Or or can we look at some of these IOs that you need? Do you need them isolated? Can we use non-isolated for maybe for this circuit? So so it's good to actually have that information as early as possible so that the, this initial discussion and architecture is, is kind of constructed. It makes no sense for us to spend, you know, a week working on, on something where I tell you it's going to be, you know, $200 more than you need. And then also we would like to know, or, or whoever will be quoting needs to know how quickly do you need to be it's completely different situation if you want to be in production really in in five months or if you want to be in production in 2027 okay so now let's talk about the architecture so on electronic side you need to decide um how do how, how do you approach it from electronics design point of view for most of the most of the projects the best architecture is uh what we normally do, what Toradex does, you buy a SOM from, from us or, you know, God forbid, from some other competitor and you use a carrier board together and create a system using these two components. Um, sometimes you can get some uh, savings on a unit cost or, or some uh, lower unit cost if you make customized uh, SOM. So there is an option. But typically, you need to be in certain level, certain manufacturing volume per year for for Toradex to to consider that. And um, sometimes we are also asked about doing actually processor down design, where we would take the circuitry from the SOM and put them straight on a carrier board, where you would really create a, a single a PCB design. Um, this 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 approach was used a lot in in the past. You know, in the last thirty years, all designs were done this way. Um, uh, people still think about it and they ask for it because they believe it leads to a lower unit cost. And it is true if you make 100,000 per year. If you are going to make 5,000 per year, 10,000 per year, 25,000 per year, this usually does not lead to a lower unit cost. Um, so, so for that reason, you will very likely this this will not be the right choice um is it still used yes it is used this approach this number three processor down processor down design is still used but for technical reasons let's say if you ask us to design a product that is smaller than a som physically smaller well then we cannot use the som and we need to do something like this or if you have very special power requirements if you if you ask for uh, power consumption in in um, sleep mode less than 20 milliwatts well then we need to do something like that okay so let's say you decided to go with carrier board and, and a song um what what um carrier board do you need the best choices first step look at the toradex website we have few production boards for every family and see if you can find one there also, there is um, many uh, Toradex partners have their own off-the-shelf carrier boards that they would be happy to, to, to sell to you. And if you find one that meets your requirements, very likely that will be uh, the best choice because you, know, you don't have to pay for development. You can buy it straight away. And also, the unit cost is unbeatable. If you buy Toradex uh, Mellow, you will not be able to get the same unit price in your in your custom carrier board just because we make these in really really a large quantity and we are optimized uh, to uh, the below material is optimized and, and you, you basically that leads to the lowest uh, unit cost 
uh, unfortunately often it's just not possible or you would you want your custom device because you have custom requirements so you can do a cust custom carrier board and that's where we can help okay so the next uh, next choice you will need to do um is you will need to pick uh, a toradex som so so and it starts with a som family for most of the designs uh, i recommend to look at the verdins 80% uh, i would say more than 80% of the designs it's the best choice and verdins are here in this green uh, in this green uh, area uh, you will see you will find some low cost lower performance options and you can scale up through multiple uh, types up to IMX 95 that is higher and higher a little bit higher cost once you are with certain family almost always the module you will be able to pick a different module within that family so you design your carrier board and you can put the single core AM62 that costs $50 up to a six core IMX 95 okay so so verdin family is is the one first to consider colibri family is kind of lower performance lower cost but it's more major i would not kind of recommend it for brand new designs unless you have real reason to go super super low a palis family is also the older family of the higher performance family uh, but typically higher cost than the verdin of the similar performance and our new family, Aquila, we have the first one, IM69, that's a beast. If you need uh, 12 cameras and you need uh, 32 uh, tops uh, acceleration, that's where you want to be looking for. Basically, those are the systems that compete in performance with, uh, with uh, Intel and AMD single board computers. Okay, for the, for the enclosure, you have multiple options off the shelf again if you find something that's that is off the shelf it's your best choice there's a number of manufacturers in germany that make very nice off the shelf plastic and metal enclosures also in the united states uh, you can find extruded aluminum uh, um, you know enclosure good choice um, other one is if you need something really simple um just to cover it it doesn't need to look sexy it doesn't need to look like a, a, a I, apple product if you, if you just need something to to hide your carrier board plastic might be the best the advantage is lowest unit cost but you need to pay for molds um and i'll you know the molds are you know between 20 and fifty thousand dollars it will cost you to make those molds um other option is for the custom enclosure if you want simple sheet metal again you need to find a good supplier and that will be probably in Brazil, Turkey, or, or China, or, or, or Eastern Europe, in Slovenia. Um, almost anyone can design it. You will need to find someone to manufacture it at a reasonable cost. And uh, the, if you have really nice uh, product, you might need to do a full industrial design where you will have multiple parts, multiple molds, uh, you know, die cast, heating, and, and so on. Display, if you need a display, um, you definitely want to talk uh, to a company that will be designing the carrier board because your choice of protocol, display protocol, your choice of touch screen and your choice of backlight on the display will affect how much circuitry needs to go on that carrier board. So it's not easy just to compare display with display. One might look cheaper, but if it doesn't have a good protocols, then it will require lots of circuitry on carrier board and that means extra money on the carrier board so just have that in mind operating system we would say 90 percent of the new applications are linux uh for you know what we see maybe five percent is android and then some some other things qnx is the next one and we have quite a good support for qnx um so we can support all of those um on, on the Linux, which, with what type of Linux to use is, uh, we have some pre-built uh, Linux images. You can start there. If you are super lucky, it might work for you. But uh, what we typically recommend is really Torizon that I briefly, briefly mentioned. That seems to be the best option for many, many applications. Uh, or you can go into a Yocto and do you know, complete builds and uh, configuration of, of your operating system. 
Okay, so on electronics design, you will need to at some point design uh, decide who is going to who's going to do that. Um, best recommendation is work with someone who has experience. The more experience that company has in this particular type of design, the easier it will be for them to find out the best choices. Even if you have a very good uh, design company who does something else, they will likely not really know which of these six ways how to implement second Ethernet is best for you, right? And each of them has advantages, disadvantages. One has the best unit price, but it might you very likely fail um, your radiated emissions if you if you do it first time because well we failed and our engineers are quite good. Um, also, when you are this selecting the company we found out there is a wide range of costs you you will uh, you might they they might quote you for the same design we've seen a quotes where we quoted for the same project where the design costs more was more than double between between the companies um, also um, a few weeks ago i'm talking to a customer here in the united states and he tells me yeah branislav i want to do this but i don't want to do it right now and i go like can you explain why you don't want to do the carrier board right now? And he tells me, yeah, we were told it will take seven to nine months. And I go, I, maybe it will take seven to nine months to someone else, but I can give it to you in 10 weeks if you, you know, if you comment. So um, again, uh, if you have an experience, we did more than 40 different carrier boards. We have circuits, we can just, 80% of, of, of it is done for us for us because we have a lot of experience. Um, another thing that I strongly recommend you do at the beginning, at the time when you are selecting your supplier is ask them how much it will cost me, how much do I pay for the unit cost? And if they are not able to tell you, well, that's probably not the best, best because that means they don't know the architecture, they ne never done it, we, we always give a unit price estimate at the time of when we are quoting the design so that you know how much it will be. Also, uh, if, if you work with uh, many generic companies, they are really not that concerned about the, the bomb cost, right? So uh, depending on who does this, you might see 20 to 30 percent difference of bill of material. And how do I know? Because sometimes I look at these carrier boards that someone else designed, and when I look at it, I go, well, if we did it, it would cost you 20 to 30 percent loss, uh, less on the bomb cost. Electronic design. Okay. If you decide to go with your internal team, or if you have a team that really doesn't have that much experience, um, it is still, it might work quite well. Toradex has lots of examples on, uh, on, um, Torax website, they are complete projects, complete Altium projects to get you started. I recommend though that you focus on production carrier boards because we have different type development carrier boards and those have lots of circuitry that you typically don't need. So if you just do those, your bill of, bill of material cost will be higher than it needs to be. Enclosure design for this. Um, if it is a simple enclosure, you will find some local supplier who will do it for you. It shouldn't be really a big problem. Um, prototypes, uh, manufacturing and testing. This is all, almost always done by the company that did uh, actually design. So again, and this should, you know, you don't need to choose here. BSP and drivers. Okay, so this can be, if you are lucky, you will not need to do anything here. Uh, in a typical project, you will need to do a little bit, um, at least configure your device tree, uh, and that's typically, it's not a big problem. Uh, but if you have a device that has really some new functionality for which the driver is not in the in mainstream Linux, um, it might be a significant undertaking uh, in terms of time, cost, and risk. So, and again, um, the choices of electronics design basically depending on which components the designer selects might affect this if he or she selects some chip that is low cost and available but there is no driver 
you will need to do a lot of work. So basically, you want to ask your supplier at the time when they are quoting or as early as possible and ask them, if you design the carrier boards, which of which drivers do I need? Do I need any BSP modifications? Right. And then have that in mind and consider it at that time, because, you know, they might save you two dollars on a unit cost, but you will need to spend four months uh, paying someone two hundred fifty dollars per hour to design a custom driver. Application software, as I said, this is typically done by you, so I'm not going to talk uh, much about this. Certifications. Okay, this can be easy. If you are in North America and it's a part of the bigger device, you might not need to meet any certifications or meet any standards. You are lucky. That's really the best. Um, however, uh, for Europe, I believe you will need to do at least um, radiated emissions so that you can claim that your products meets um, meets uh, CE, uh, get, get a C stamp. Um, and on the other side of the spectrum is when you get to design a, a product that needs to meet 20 different standards because it's worldwide use and you know you want to have it certified for everything and everywhere uh, this can be significant undertaking and unfortunately even very experienced team will not be able to pass if you have five antennas in your system you will likely not be able to pass on the, on the first try. Um, so you'll need to work with someone who, the more experience they have, the more certifications they are failed, the better. Because every time they fail, they learn something and they are not going to fail on the same time. And also experts. Like once we, we talk to a uh, world champion in EMI troubleshooting, who will be representing USA in the Olympics in France uh, next month, and we sent him a design and told him, hey, we have this failure. What do we need to fix? And he came back with 20 page report of 80 items to fix. And I'm like, hey, dude, this is just not reasonable. Like, I cannot do this. And, and the more you talk to him, you find out he doesn't know. He tells you, well, try this, try this, try this, try this. And this is an expert. So if an expert doesn't know, your engineers will not know. So don't underestimate this this portion of the design it can be quite uh, challenging uh, manufacturing setup you will need to do um at least some sort of uh, a, a test design a test uh, for for your product have that in mind volume manufacturing okay you do your manufacturing uh, dollar runs uh, boards come up uh, fine and nice and uh, the last step you will need to do you will need to think about um, what plan do you have, what support do you have, so that uh, when you want to place next order, you don't end up in a situation where your contract manufacturer tells you, I cannot buy this, uh, this Ethernet controller and the lead time is 52 weeks. What are we going to do? So you need to have some sort of plan for that. OK, let's do the poll too. OK, if you could hire one more person for your team, who would it be? So think about that. Okay, I think uh, let's look at the results. And okay, so you would want application software developer. Okay, kind of makes sense. Uh, it's the part that for sure you will be doing yourself. Uh, so uh, you need that. The second project of product manager. Okay, very interesting. We don't have enough project managers. Uh, BSP developer and hardware engineers, almost no one needs them. And okay, it's good to see that only small per small number of people want to replace their boss with an AI. Okay, great. Let's uh, move on. Development cost. Okay, so how much is how much is our paranormal gateway going to cost? So we would we would uh, quote you thirty thousand US dollars to design a carrier board, five thousand dollars to make prototypes. And if you wanted us to do a, a radiated emissions free scan, we would ask $3,000 for it. And this would include, if we fail, we fix it at our own cost. So it's almost like an insurance for you. On, uh, you will also need to do the enclosure. So I don't know, budget 10,000 to 15,000 for you know German or North US, US engineer to do that or for us. Um, 
If you decide to do a plastic enclosure, you need to budget those 20 to $30,000 for your molds uh, to be done in probably China. Um, and if you want to run a few prototype runs, you need uh, some money for that. If you go with us uh, and if you will do manufacturing with Toradex, we will not charge you for uh, manufacturing setup. With other companies, it can be I don't know, 10,000, 20,000, um, Thirty thousand dollars, depending on the complexity of the of the tests uh, test setup. So this is for this particular relatively simple product. Yes, we had the quotes where this thirty thousand dollar number for carrier board design. We had ones where it was the, on the lowest side it might be twenty thousand, on the high side it might be eighty thousand, right? So you can quickly go into much higher numbers uh, and budget needs if you have a complex device. Okay, how much it will cost you in terms of unit cost? So the carrier board for our gateway, for our spec, would be between $120 and $180. It's 1000 per year, um, depending on the features and, you know, you know some choices that uh, we would make or you would have to make. Uh, some would be the one with Bluetooth and Wi-Fi and uh, IT rated, tem industrial temperature rated would be six start. They're starting at $60 in that quantity. If you don't need the Bluetooth and Wi-Fi, you might find you know the lowest cost one is forty-four dollars. You need a modem for thirty dollars. You need enclosure. So, are we meeting our two hundred fifty dollars or two hundred fifty euro target? Uh, we might, but it's going to be tight. Design schedule. With if you work with us, we will quote you typically ten to sixteen weeks. Uh, to do the design to the alpha prototype from start to alpha prototypes and then five to six weeks for any other round and what does it mean in terms of schedule so we talked about those nine months for uh, uh, america and uh, 18 months for europe uh, if you basically break it down per you know number of weeks for each of these steps uh, here the totals are at the bottom so you can actually have the schedule done kind of this way. So could we, we would be able to do it uh, within those within those times. And what are the risks? So basically I wanted to talk, what are your highest risk? If you are a product or project manager and, and you know, where is the risky part? Well, certifications, I would say is the, the highest risk part, because if you need to redo it, it will take, you will need to analyze it, you will need to figure it out, you need to make new prototypes, you need to go again to the lab. And that takes quite a lot of time. So that can really derail, derail your project there. Uh, if you need to do a drivers, that can be super hard to estimate how long it, it's going to take. Application software, often there are delays, right? Like your software guys are, you know, underestimated it or, or they are busy. Um, and uh, you know there are other requirements uh, you know you have people leaving you cannot find an expert many reasons why this can take longer than you thought um, molds for plastic parts also can be a problem basically if that mold comes out and it's not right and the parts are not right and you need to redo the mold it will take another i don't know six to eight weeks um and electronics design, well, there are some risks there in high speed design, always, you know, things don't work, right? So, but it's not really as, as critical as those other ones. So these are, in my opinion, this is what I would say is uh, the highest risk is number one and, you know, uh, decreasing level of risks as we go down the list. Okay. We are almost done here. Uh, feel free to contact me if you have a question by uh, email. Uh, it's probably the best. This is my email address. Uh, please definitely contact us if you have a project that you need help with. Uh, we would like to work with you. And uh, let me start questions. What is the shortest development schedule possible? So the shortest one, that I can recollect where from the customer contact to few a thousand pieces shipped was five months and it was with a California company. In California, things happen fast. What is the re reliability of the EMMC you use? Well, uh, we 
we depending on depending on the type of emmc so there are emmc's um reliability of emmc's kind of like two aspects temperature range so definitely want to select the emmc that is rated and then the number of write cycles and the number of write cycles depends also on, on the technology if they use single cell double cell triple cell so if you want the highest possible uh reliability you want to go single cell if you can find one it's, it's harder and harder to find one another approach is you need to deal with those write cycles you need to calculate if you are constantly writing uh, the controller in the emmc is going to spread it over the whole area so if you have physically larger parts you are effectively increasing amount of data that you could write there so that's another approach uh, in general emmc's are uh, we don't have units coming back with the emmc failures uh, they are definitely more um, reliable than using uh, sd card instead of emmc okay do you have xilinx uh, socks uh, sorry we do uh, arm based uh, processors at this time Odin. custom material boards plus standard song is this option available yes definitely uh, what that's what we do we do customized carrier boards all the time as you see it's not it can be done relatively quickly and it is not that uh, that expensive that's the core of our business doing the customized carrier boards for uh, for a standard for the standard sums how many prototype cycles should we plan to use typically we plan for alpha prototypes beta prototypes that's what we include in our quotes and the third round would be a, a first volume production round but this depends heavily on the complexity of the product um, if you have very complex product more rounds is typically needed if you well that's the that's the way how we do it it's kind of called agile hardware development where we have no problem doing uh, uh, fast rounds because it's it's faster to find an issue uh, and correct the, the problems and it often leads to a better design at the end can we lower unit price without losing functionality well there is a number of choices you can do actually at the hardware design and at the architecture design phase uh, to find a way how to address particular technical requirement uh, at the unit possible uh, at the lowest possible uh, bomb cost so so there is lots of things you can do there and again if you did this exercise before uh, it helps um so so yes it often it is i would need to know the particular requirements uh, feel free to contact me and i will give you my best opinion what i would recommend to do do you support startup if so how um we support anyone um who come to us uh, for us uh, there is not much difference between startup maybe in in the terms of in the terms of uh, volume quantity right maybe startup will tell me well we only need 100 oh we will let's let's talk about it so so yes we work with startups do you provide uh, s bomb uh, so do you provide um software bill of materials and CV monitoring to comply with security compliance? Yes, we do. Do you have service for refactoring the SOM modules for cost reduction in the case design cost is required? If yes, how does it work? Okay, so if I understand the question correctly is, would be take our existing SOM and make modifications in circuitry or in the form factor to meet your specifications yes we are open to that um, as i said it has advantages and disadvantages uh, please contact us let's talk about your particular case we would i would be happy to to go over over your requirements uh, with us so in general the answer is yes uh, we are open to that how do I update my system if they are not always connected? Um, if your system is sometimes connected, you can still use uh, Toradex infrastructure. Like if your system, 
comes to the comes you know online from time to time you can do it at that time um, if your system will never uh, be online uh, there is a few different ways how to do it using a usb stick that your end customer or your service technician can go in plug it in and it will suck in the new versions from there um, uh, or i don't know you will need to figure out actually a physical way how to get the data into your hardware if uh, if your device is not online or it's not on any sort of network uh, wireless network how long does basic certification take so if you need to do you know fcc part 15 in north america or fcc part 22 and it's really just basic radiated emissions if you just want to make sure it's you are within the limits that can be done typically within a few weeks so it's just a matter of when will you have prototype done you will need need to be you will need to do a little bit of test software you will need to prepare all your cables everything that you need to certify with that unit then you can schedule your time in the lab you go to the lab if you pass you will have your certification probably within a few days so it can be you know two to three weeks if you, uh, that's one test one simple test and you pass if you have multiple tests you need to budget you can budget three four months for that easily i would recommend so it depends case on case can i just white white label the iv gateway so uh yeah we have a new relatively new product iv gateway uh, can i white, white label and sell it under your your brand yes we are open to that uh, contact me or contact uh, please contact sales and i guess okay so um if there is no more questions well thank you very much and as i said uh, feel free to to reach out and uh, connect with me if you have any questions or if you um, have a project that uh, where you need help thank you very much bye